Hello and welcome to Sense Business. How are you all doing? Today we'll cover ownership types. So to start with, there's three diff in this lesson we will cover solo trader, partnership, limited companies, and I have prepared 12 questions which you can practice to help you get better grades. I do apologize for not uploading uh, quite in a while. I've had other teachers contribute, uh, teachers and students contribute to this channel. And I found that most of you wasn't happy with the, the quality of lessons they were producing. So I have decided with the current quarantine to spend some time and uh, get some lessons prepared for you. So I've prepared this lesson. I hope you enjoy it. I've also got a giveaway which I will uh, tell you about later on. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is a solo trader. So a solo trader is also known as solo proprietor. So a sole trader is the single owner of a business and makes all the decision. Solo traders are responsible if anything goes wrong. So solo trader is a business where it's just one person that has maybe one employee working for them. Or they might be working all by their self. So a solo trader has unlimited liability. This means if the business fails, the owner is responsible for all the debts of that business and might lose uh, their uh, position. So they might lose all their money belongings if, if the business goes down. So not a great deal of capital is needed to start a business, but it can take uh, it can make it harder for the business to grow. So for example, when I started, let's say we use this YouTube channel as a business, I was a solo trader. So it is kind of hard because I'm not making a lot of money out of it, but I am putting some time in. So if all the decision I make on this channel are mine, but whereas uh, the company that I currently work for is different because there's somebody else that makes the decision, the directors, the board of directors, the managers, the senior management, they make the decision. And we simply follow these decision and extract it to the workforce. So that's the difference, which we'll talk about later on. So because solo trader businesses are often small, they might suffer from some disadvantages. They might not gain economic of skill because they cannot buy in bulk, so pay more for their goods. So if you are to buy a thousand t-shirts, it might cost you a pound. But if you are to each, and if you were to buy, I don't know, like 50 t-shirts, it would probably cost you about five pound each because it costs more to buy and less quantities. And that's how big businesses make lots of money, whereas a solo trader might not get make that much money as they don't have a lot of capital. They may not benefit from specialized specialization in the vision of labor. In a small business with a few employees, people will have to do more than one job, not just one job they are based at. So as a solo trader, you could be painting, you could be decorating, you could be washing, you could be uh, doing all your audit, you could be doing everything you could be doing taxes everything you're responsible you're the only and the main person for that business so solo trader the aims of solo trader will not just be to make profit profit solo traders may be in business so they can make all the decision and have the lifestyle they want they might just aim to survive. Solo trader is the business, so the business will have lack of continuity. If the owner of the business dies, then that is the end of the business unless their family takes over. So mainly solo trader is about having your own business, doing the hours that suits your customers, which suits your lifestyle. So solo traders for somebody that's 
not after a hell of a lot of money, but want something to be their own boss. And this brings us to talk about partnership. So a partnership is an agreement between two or more people to own and take responsibility for a business. So now this is, so let's say you started off as a solo trader and you're really making good amount of money and you, uh, you're struggling to cope on your own. So what you do is you get somebody else to agree with you and you become a partnership. You make a partnership so you split the responsibility and the profit. So what is shared when you do a partnership? The money need to be uh, needed to start of the business. So if it's a brand new business, then both of you will need to put about same amount of money to start the business. You need to share the ownership, just like I said, liabilities for any debts, profit, decisions, the jobs that need doing, knowledge and skills. These all need to be shared between the two or three of you. Uh, usually a partnership is usually a deed of partnership is drawn up. This is a legal document that includes how much money each partner will uh, put in to start the business, how profits and losses are to be shared, what each partner will have responsibility for, how the partnership will end. So, having a deed of partnership can prevent problems in disagreement in the future because everything is written in the document in black and white. So, they cannot say later on, oh, I didn't agree to this. And you cannot say, well, I didn't agree to this either. So, that's why it's important that you have a deed of partnership. So, partnership have unlimited liability which means a partner could be responsible for some debts even if they were caused by another partner so you're doing a fantastic job but your partner isn't and they caused you to go into debt so even though they caused you to go into debt you will have to pay your share of that debt so it is very important that you select a partner Ship with somebody that's quite uh, capable of being your partner or cap and has similar ambitions as yourself. So partnerships have a lack of continuity. If one of the partner dies, then the partnership is ended. Partnerships usually have more capital than solo traders. So an aim might be to extend as well as to survive and make profit. So there's disagreements between the disadvantages could be the disagreements between the partners might make decision making difficult. So that could be a big disadvantage because you might think a new product or a new uh, way of approaching a marketing strategy is awesome, but your partner might not think so. So this might cause some disagreement and uh, it will take a hell of a lot of time to do. Um, and to make decision then to execute the project. Having to share profit means that person who does the most work might not be the one who gets the greatest reward and this might sometimes demotivate uh, some people. And this brings us to limited companies. There are two types of limited companies we need to remember for your exam. So private limited companies, LTD and Public Limited Companies, PLC. So the most important difference between private and public limited company is that shares in private limited companies cannot be sold to general public. Limited companies get their capital by issuing shares. For each share bought, there is an equal amount of ownership an equal amount of say in the run, uh, running of the business and an equal share in any profit. So let's say if somebody buys 50 shares of your business, that means they are 50% of shares of your business. That means they own half of the, your business. 
all the so or if somebody buys one share they still could have a say on what your business does limited companies have limited liabilities this means that if the business has debts the owners are only responsible for the amount of capital that they put into the business the amount of money that they paid for the shares that they bought the business has legal entity which means that it exists in its own right there is a lot of legal documentation required by business before they can set up this include registering the business with register companies and drawing up a memorandum of association most they must include types of limited company name address purpose of the company and amount of capital to be raised so limited companies a public limited company is able to share sales on stock exchange this means it has access to much more capital because anybody can buy capital and buy part of the business the personal person originally get setting up the limited company can lose control of the business because there is a diverse of ownership and control the owners appoint directors who appoint managers all of whom might have different aims for the business so even though if you set up a business thinking yes great it's a fantastic limited company you might not be in control for so long because the people that buy the more shares they can choose who the next director is and who they want the managers to be so i have prepared here for you 12 questions answer to these will be on uh, in the description of this video you click on the link you go onto my website and uh, you'll see the answers but before you actually see the answers i want you to comment all these answers and then compare them um, to the website to make sure that you have got all of these correct i also have i'm also giving away an iphone so let me just uh, i'm also giving away an iphone so make sure you click on the link below get your registered uh, registered unique number comment that in the uh, uh, underneath this video in the comment box and I will pick one winner hopefully you could be the winner once again I do apologize for not uploading uh, a lot of videos but I, I'm going to try and upload at least um, 50 to 60 videos in next month or so so stay tuned like share and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next video take care for now